Dads, well, we're cooking with Cameron. Time to apron up. Time to get back into the kitchen. Let's sort of vanilla cake into something real special. G'day, Dads. Great to have you along this week. Now, you might be thinking, Cameron, baking cake, that's pretty simple. Well, you're right, but I want to do something a little bit different with this. And there's a reason behind that. Because we're going on a road trip. This is only just going to be part of what we're doing. Do you remember the other week I talked about doing cold pressed coffee? Well, we're actually going to turn this vanilla cake, so it's just a branded cake, nothing flash, nothing, nothing special. But I'm going to use my, my cold press to turn a vanilla cake into a coffee cake. And then we're going to go visit my mate that roasts my coffee. He's just opened up a shop. So I thought, why not? Let's go and visit him. So I'm going to go visit a mate. Coffee and cake go hand in hand, don't they? So instead of buying a cake, I'm just going to knock one up real quick. So what am I going to do? Well, as I said, we've got vanilla. I've got some of the cold press. And I've got some uh, uh, some walnuts. Coffee and walnuts, they just seem to go together. Um, so the recipe, of, we've just got to adjust it. It's so the packet mix, three eggs, 80 grams of butter, you now three quarters of a cup of milk. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quarter of that cup out. So it's a half a cup of milk and a quarter of a cup of iced coffee. Okay, so that's the simple thing. Now, pretty simple, we just put it all together, mix it up, put it in the burner, and then we're gonna do some icing as well, just to make it a little bit fancy. So let's get into it. Now the trick with a cake, I always put a bit of spray oil on. And it's a spring form tip. Makes life so much easier. So I've just lined that with paper, baking paper, nice and easy. So they're like, packet mixes are so easy, and they're also just easy to make a little bit special. So this is vanilla, it's now coffee cake. Sorry, right yeah, that's that's ready. Time to bung it in the burner. Now, 50 minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer to 45. So we preheated the oven to 140, so that's, a, that's not too hot an oven actually. So preheated, 140, put it in the oven, about 50 minutes, we'll test it, see how it goes. That's gonna just fit in there. I need to take it somewhere, so I'm putting it up. Doesn't look like a flash. This is a pre-mixed icing. I want to make it coffee because it's vanilla. Because, because it's pre-mixed, can't put too much coffee. There you go, that's nice and easy. Vanilla cake turned into a coffee and walnut cake. Let's head off and go see our mate down at the coffee shop. Well, Dave, it's great to have you along with us on this road trip down to Signet. It's a beautiful little spot south of Hobart. Uh, if you've heard of Huon Valley, we're just not far from that. We've got Port Signet behind us here. Uh, it's a beautiful bay. Um, I'm looking across the valley. I can see some vineyards. 
You can see some boats. And um, if I turn around here, I can see Anthony from the Beansmith. Great. Hello, mate. Very well, thanks, Cam. Thanks for visiting. Oh, mate, it's a pleasure. Um, I've been down here for a bit, you know, trying to do these videos, and um, we're having some fun down here today. Um, we're up to our second bit of cake, um, and second coffee, for me at least, anyway. Um, but uh, as, as I've said, you know, I've been doing all these coffee stuff, so I thought I'd bring you down here and show you around my coffee supplier's shop. And so here we are. What have we got here, Anthony? Hmm. So all under one small roof, um, here at the uh, the back of the cannery, uh, we've got the, the Beansmith operation, which is uh, coffee roasting in the corner. So coffee roaster, de-stoner, packaging behind me here. We've got the five metre long coffee bench. We've got everything from espresso through to uh, a brew bar at some stage in the future. Ooh. And then uh, and where Cam's sitting, we've got uh, a little shop selling coffee machines and uh, manual brewing gear. Awesome. So it's only, it's only a small one-man setup, so to speak. Yeah, largely, yeah. Yeah, one man, every now and then you, you bring the wife and child in. Yeah, slave yeah. Labor. Got, got, a few, um, got a few casual staff for different tasks, but uh, I'm here most of the time on my own. Um, so any chance we can have a look around the shop? Yeah, sure. Cool. Let's, let's have a look. No what does roasting coffee entail? Okay, so I'll give you a, a short summary of uh, what we do. We get, uh, we get green coffee beans, yep. which are the seeds of a small fruit, often with a red skin, but sometimes yep. yellow. Okay. And then we, um, we pop it into the coffee roaster up here. We drop it in. It goes into here with a rotating drum with paddles, and we pull hot air across it at about 200 degrees. Cool. And in about 15 minutes, we turn the green coffee, which is hard and insoluble, into something you're familiar with. That's, that's really cool. So 15 minutes for, like how much is that machine gonna do in one go? Oh, in this machine I put uh, 10 kilos in and I get um, 8.7 kilos out. So, so that's the moisture going in it. You lose about 13 to 15% moisture. Cool, now you've got this, this is really cool. Now you're telling me about this machine here. What does this machine mm. do? So there's, there's, there's some time there's debris in your um, roasted coffee or in, yep. your, in, in your coffee in general. And once it's roasted, it's, a, it's twice as big for, okay. and, and a little bit lighter. So it flies in an airflow quite easily. So what you can do is you can pull all of your coffee um, that you drop into here up into here, which is in a vacuum, yep. and hopefully leave sticks and stones behind. Nice, so that's gonna save your coffee grinder. Very much so. No. Well, thanks Anthony, those machines are really cool. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna assume that there's a, there is a, that fine line between amazing coffee and burnt. Yes, I'm afraid there is. It's, um, you can be roasting the coffee for 14 minutes and then in the end of it, really, you know, it's the last, um, 10 seconds and half a degree where you're really making your mind up about getting it right. Mm. And, and that can be the difference between really great and um, overdoing it. Um, so what got you into roasting coffee? Mm. Well, look, it, it came from, um, I've always had interests in, um, you know, how things taste and smell and mm. all those kinds of nice things in, in life. Coffee was one of those. And because coffee is uh, inevitably uh, a technical pursuit, I, I just, you know, being an engineer, I, I just, got interested in what um, what I could do to you know make the coffee better yep. and then once I got past the coffee making the next extension was a coffee roasting where you can really transform the coffee mm. flavors uh, from the raw product yeah and roasting is getting really popular with the hipsters mm. I'll say that now, Anthony when I first met him you used to wear a vest where's that gone look it, it's getting it's getting a rest for now I'm, I'm yeah I'm going the uh, the Steve Irwin look going at the moment Steve Irwin look. No worries. so yeah, you can buy little roasters for at home, can't you? Yep. You yeah. can, you, yeah, like a, around a thousand dollars or so, give so, or take. You so, can buy various home roasters yeah. that'll roast uh, a bag of coffee at a time. Yeah, cool. So there's another option, Dad. But you know what? I reckon we just stick to making coffees. Um, and so if I'm going to make a coffee at home, and I don't have any machines, you know, what can I? What's what's an entry level? What's a start point? Yeah. So if you want to make espresso coffee at home, mm. you'll you'll need a machine. Um, that, uh, that will you know, have a pump in it because it's mm. brewed under pressure. So the best advice I could give is the same advice I, I got way, way back when I started, which was to buy a small single boiler coffee machine if you can. Um, they're not necessarily more expensive, they're just a particular format. And, and someone like DeLonghi still makes one. It's a, usually a little black unit. Um, they're about $200. And because of the way they're made, you can coax them to work quite well 
even yeah. though they're not that expensive or, or very heavy or anything, yeah. but you can get them to do the right things with the temperature and um, get a really good result. But you uh, should pair it with good coffee and a, and, and a reasonable burr grinder. A reasonable burr grinder. Now this was something I learned later on in my coffee experiences. I had a spice and coffee grinder. Oh dear. You mean oh dear, what was wrong with that? <laughs> so so the, 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 this, is, this happens a lot because uh, you know uh, the companies that make the spice grinders sell them as a coffee mm. a, a crossover type product. And they have, a, they have a single arm and it flails around mm. and it makes particles of any size based yeah. on the product that you're grinding up. Mm. So it's quite uh, variable. Yeah. With a burr grinder, you've got two sets of uh, cast teeth and you're controlling the gap between them. So the particles are largely the same size. Yeah. And in a, you know, in, in, a, in a bed of coffee that's brewed under pressure, yeah. you need the particles to be um, a relatively similar size for you to have some control over it. Yep. Okay. So the burr grind is, uh, the, burr grind is the way to go, not the spice. Grind. Most definitely, yeah. Okay. Good bit of advice there, Dad. So, Anthony, you're running a business, you're a husband, you're a dad, dad of one? A dad, yeah, so I've got one daughter, she's eight years old. Eight years old, and we mentioned earlier that you, she's your slave monkey in here in the shop. Oh, yeah, when she comes in to volunteer, yeah. When she yeah. comes in to volunteer, I bet you, you do make it up to her, though. Yeah. So, um, how do you balance work, family, and family life? How does that all come together? Yeah, well, it's never easy, but mm. um, you've just got to, I think you've just got to acknowledge that you're going to have to do some, uh, some good time with your children uh, at, at various times of the week that you can all fit it in together. So yeah. you've got the, the time after you get home from work and the children haven't gone to bed yet. Um, that's pretty important because you can listen to what they've done at school, yeah. make sure they get uh, a, a good dinner, um, and then maybe read a book or, or do something else together. Yeah. Um, and then at other times of the week when you can, you try and do something else meaningful. And mm. for me, that's turned out to be quite nice um, in the sense that my daughter and I have both started rock climbing at a similar time a couple yep. of years ago and now we go every Monday yep. and, and we, we, I leave work a little bit early, pick her up from the end of school and we drive to Hobart to go rock climbing yep. and it's become a joint hobby. Nice. Now off, off camera before you mentioned that um, it's, it's about building a relationship and making you know, spending that time so that they know who you are and you know who they are yeah. as they grow up. Um, you mentioned that before off camera. Yeah, I, I think that's really important because you, you, they've, they've, as they're growing up into into little little uh, versions of yourselves, you know, they've got to develop their own self esteem. Yeah. So I think it's really important that they think uh, that they understand that you know they've got some something worthwhile to say to you. Yeah. So that's why you know listening to them, engaging in what they do, is important equally as much as sharing your passion. Like mm. I like lots of different things, and my daughter picks up on that. She knows yeah. I'm enthusiastic about coffee and rock climbing. That's never a bad thing to share, mm. to share your enthusiasm yeah. with your kids. Yeah, just as long as she's not drinking the coffee yet. Not yet, no. Not yet, awesome. Um, cool, well, Anthony, it's been great to catch up with you. Yeah. And uh, thanks for letting us come into your shop and have a, a wander around. Thanks for visiting. Rearrange a few things. Um, I hope you like the cake. No, I made oh. that for you. My, my second piece is about to get devoured. Second piece. Anyway, dads, um, I want to encourage you to get out there, as I always do, and say, go meet your, go meet your supplies. Um, as I said before, what, what machines have you got? Show us your setup. Uh, be great to see them. Hashtag, as I said before, Cooking with Cameron, Father and Channel. And uh, I'm going to head back to the kitchen, I think, and um, I might make a coffee when I get home. Um, but dads, till next time, keep being great dads.